Internet. Good afternoon and welcome to Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center where the Crew Dragon is sitting atop the Falcon 9 rocket waiting to lift off on its in-flight abort test tomorrow. So let's start by talking a little bit about the weather because that's our big concern for tomorrow. Launch weather right here on the ground at 39A actually perfect absolutely perfect exactly what we want however 30 to 35 miles out to sea uh, in the dragon splashdown and recovery area that's a whole different story with winds and sea state conditions that are looking a little bit iffy for tomorrow morning at the beginning of the window um, in a rather surprise move we were told today that they might move the window uh, later into the day because sea states are anticipated to get better the farther into the day we go so that is an interesting thing and made possible by the fact that Dragon isn't trying to rendezvous with anything. Um, it's really the, the, the lighting and visibility concerns that we are most um, looking at in terms of our constraints as well as the weather in the recovery zone. So that's why they are able to potentially move this window. So regardless of when the launch actually occurs, what will we see? So first off, the crew access arm will pull back away from the rocket about 38 minutes prior to liftoff, at which point Dragon's abort system and Super Dracos will be armed and ready to fire in case anything goes wrong from that point to the point where they actually plan to abort. The fueling process will unfold exactly like a normal Falcon 9 mission does, with RP-1 kerosene and densified liquid oxygen beginning to pump into the first stage of the Falcon 9 at T-35 minutes, and RP-1 kerosene beginning to flow into the second stage at T-35 minutes as well. That second stage RP-1 kerosene load will wrap up about 18 and a half minutes before liftoff and enter what is known as stable replenish. At T-16 minutes, Densified liquid oxygen will begin flowing into the second stage as well. That entire fueling process will wrap up about three minutes before liftoff, and then Falcon 9 will lift off. And here's where it gets interesting. Even though Dragons are built to go solely to the International Space Station, this one won't. This one is not trying to go to the station. It's not trying to rendezvous with the station. So instead of going northeast out of the Kennedy Space Center, it'll actually pitch and roll and go due east out of the Kennedy Space Center, just like the big telecommunication satellites that SpaceX has launched recently, following that similar trajectory. But it will fly a normal profile, the same profile it would fly with a crew on board. 84 seconds after liftoff, when Falcon 9 is about 19 kilometers in altitude and 4 kilometers downrange from the Kennedy Space Center and Pad A, the abort will trigger. And the way this, they are doing this is a pre-programmed command into the Falcon 9's computers to shut down all nine Merlin 1D engines on the base of the Falcon 9 first stage. This will simulate a failure of the rocket that Crew Dragon systems will detect and initiate the abort by firing the Super Draco thrusters and separating the trunk of Dragon from the top of the second stage. The Super Dracos will fire for about 10 seconds, propelling Dragon very quickly away from the failing Falcon 9. The Dragon and trunk will then coast up to an apogee or the highest point in the suborbital arc, at which point the trunk will separate and the Dragon capsule will reorient itself heat shield first for the entry sequence of the mission. Now there won't be any plasma heating or anything like that that really occurs during atmospheric reentry at the end of an orbital mission, but it is still the orientation they need for crew safety if there were to ever be a crew on board for an abort like this, and also the orientation that they need for um, the proper deployment of the drogue parachutes and the main parachutes. And all of that should culminate with Dragon splashing down into the Atlantic Ocean between 30 and 35 kilometers downrange, depending on winds, about 10 minutes after the launch from 39A. Here's to a good in-flight abort. I'm Chris Gephardt, Assistant Managing Editor of NASASpaceflight.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you know all the times that we bring you these awesome behind-the-scenes tours at the pads and all of our videos. And please join us for our live stream that will start about an hour before liftoff tomorrow.